Adrian N. Breitfelder, City Clerk. You're hereby directed to call a regular session of the City Council to be held on Monday, December 20th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in the historic Federal Building for the purpose of conducting such business that may properly come before the City Council. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to a regular session of the Dubuque City Council for December 20th, 2021. As a reminder to our participants, you can provide in-person input or virtual audio and written input during the sections of the agenda where public input is accepted. Input options during the live meeting include, in-person attendees may approach the podium when the mayor asks if there is any public input on the item they would like to speak to. Remote attendees can log in to GoToMeeting using the login links, phone numbers, and access code that appear on the broadcast and live stream and posted on the front page of the meeting agenda. This option includes audio input and written chat input. If you are participating via computer, indicate which item you would like to speak to in the chat function or note that you would like to speak during the appropriate section. If you are participating via phone, indicate which item you would like to speak to when phone lines are unmuted. All phone lines will be unmuted during the consent agenda, public hearings, and public input periods, and city staff will determine the speaking order of the participants. All comments, whether in person or virtual, must be accompanied by a name and address. Additionally, written public input is accepted by contacting the City Council directly from the City's webpage at www.cityofdubuque.org slash council contacts and through the City Clerk's Office email at ctyclerk at cityofdubuque.org. This information will be reiterated during the meeting. Attendance for the session is as follows. Mayor Buell. Here. Council members Kavanaugh. Here. Farber. Here. Jones. Here. Resnick. Here. Roussel. Here. Sprank. Here. City Manager Van Milligan. Here. City Attorney Brumwell. Here. Thank you. Mayor Buell, I will turn it over to you for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Adrian. At this time, I would ask all who are able to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Adrian. As this is Mayor Buell's last regular city council meeting, we have a few ways to recognize him for over 26 years of public service. And we will start with a proclamation read by Mayor Pro Tem Danny Sprank. <laughs> <laughs> you get to read so many proclamations. We thought we'd we'd read we'd, we'd we would read one to you. So <laughs> thank you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Whereas Mayor Roy D. Buell has been a consistent public figure in and servant in Dubuque for decades, beginning as second ward city council member from 1996 to 2005, when elected mayor in 2005, a position which he has held since, and whereas public slash private partnerships, which would become the hallmark of Mayor Buell's approach to problem solving, were, were the source of Dubuque's gradual but steady revival that included millions of dollars invested in the community through state and federal grants, which contributed to the revitalization of its downtown and riverfront, diversification of its economy, flood protection of our most economically challenged neighborhoods, and rebranding of, of a declining Rust Belt River town into the masterpiece on the Mississippi. And whereas Mayor Buell's passion for sustainability resulted in the creation of sustainable Dubuque and Dubuque being a pioneer in resi resiliency with Mayor Buell serving in leadership roles through involvement in national sustainability conferences, the National League of City Sustainability Exchange, World City Summit, the Global C Smart City Summit, the, the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative, and signing onto the Paris Climate Accords in 2015. And under Mayor Buell's leadership, the city of Dubuque implemented many significant policies and projects that enhanced Dubuque's quality of life including greater support for arts and cultural programs, the B Branch Watershed Flood Mitigation Project, 
and numerous investments in public infrastructure. And whereas Mayor Buell has championed diversity, equity, and inclusion in the community by adding sexual orientation as a protected class to the city's human rights ordinance, supporting the creation of neighborhood associations, adopting the equitable, equitable poverty prevention and reduction plan, and advocating city support for the establishment of Crescent Community Health Center to assist vulnerable members of the community. And whereas Mayor Buell's visionary leadership is further exemplified in many awards and recognitions that Dubuque has received under his leadership, such as the All-American City Award five times in just 12 years, all under Mayor Buell's leadership, the, small, the best small city to raise a family, the most livable city in the US, and scoring 100 on the 2021 Municipal Equity Index. And whereas the city of Dubuque is fortunate to have a dedicated leader uh, whose performance of engaging citizens as partners is exemplified the fundamentals of public service and has achieved significant outcomes for the city. Sorry, it's two pages. <laughs> <laughs> now, therefore, I, Danny C. Sprank, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Dubuque, Iowa, on behalf of City Council, staff, and citizens of Dubuque, do hereby proclaim December 20th, 2021, as Roy D. Buell Day. In the City of Dubuque, Iowa, and thank Mayor Buell for his re remarkable service to our masterpiece on the Mississippi. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all very much. Thank you. For our next item, uh, Colin Wellenkamp, Executive Director of Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiatives, is virtually on and would like to share some remarks. Thank you. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Colin. Hey, Mayor. <laughs> How you doing? Well, I am uh, very honored to have this opportunity to thank you personally, on behalf of all of our mayors along the Mississippi River, all 100 mayors, because you're actually 101, or number one, as tonight would be the case, uh, <laughs> of our mayors and our association. I'm executive director of the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative, and Mayor Roy Buell has been transformative, not just for his city and state, but the entire Mississippi River, Mid-America Corridor. As the Mississippi River's uh, US's original Main Street, Mayor Buell was instrumental with his leadership, vision, and just sheer charisma and persistence in bringing that, mayor, that Main Street back to life and establishing it as Middle America's number one asset and treasure, once again, as it used to be. Mayor Buell served as a founding member of our association. He also served as a past co-chair and an executive committee member representing the state of Iowa. Under Mayor Buell's leadership as co-chair of our association, the very early days, he oversaw our independence as a group from an incubator to a fully fledged operating association of mayors and cities through the 10 state corridor and propped us up all on our own. So we no longer need to depend on any kind of parent organization or company. Also, also through his leadership, he set us on a path to involve the Mississippi River at a global level so that our corridor could take its rightful place amongst the other major food producing river basins of the planet. I'm very honored to say that without Mayor Buell, the Mississippi River would not have regained its rightful position with other rivers around the world and other critical food producing regions of the planet. The Mississippi River's basin stands as the number one food producing basin on earth. 40% of all 
agricultural commodities come out of our basement basin. One in every 12 people on earth ingest commodities growing in the Mississippi River Basin. And most of that product floats on the main stem Mississippi. Mayor Buell realized this and he sought to reconnect our corridor to the rest of the planet. We'll be sending you this, uh, Mayor, this gift in the mail very shortly. I'll do my best with my little camera here, but this is a picture of you with other major mayors that made our delegation in the 2015 COP21 UN climate meeting in Paris, France. This picture was taken in the United States Pavilion. You'll see behind them, it says uh, US Center. And we were a, an official part of the United States government's agenda for COP21 in Paris. Uh, right, right after, or excuse me, right before this picture was taken, Mayor Buell and Mayor Chris Coleman of, of uh, St. Paul, Minnesota at the time presided over a signing of our food and water security agreement, which eventually 70 nations would sign on to and still is alive today. Um, in the picture, along with Mayor Buell, who's conveniently in the center, I might add, boy, he, he really positioned this really well, uh, is myself, which is totally unnecessary to the experience, the director of the United Nations Environment Program from North America, the general secretary of the Rhine-Danube Commission for the Rhine-Danube River Basin, the man of the moment, Mayor Buell, the General Secretary for the African Association of River Basins, the General Secretary of the International Network of Basin Organizations for the Whole Planet, Mayor Chris Coleman of St. Paul, and Mayor Butch Brown of Natchez, Mississippi. That agreement and that moment reinstituted the Mississippi's rightful place with the rest of the world. Mayor Beal, on behalf of all of us in our association, not just at home here in the United States, but the rest of the major food producing river basins of the world, our mayors, of course our staff and me personally, at a very personal level, thank you for all of your service and all of your transformative actions for our nation. It has been an honor to serve with you and I am extremely grateful to call you my friend. Congratulations and good luck on your next endeavors. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much and happy holidays. Thank you. <laughs> Colin, thank you so much. This is quite a surprise. I mean, I have not seen you in person in, in uh, gosh, two years since COVID uh, started. And I know we've had virtual meetings and uh, I know there's a lot of, uh, disruption globally, you know, with the work that we were doing. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, new mayors that have, have joined the MRCTI and uh, you and your staff are, are continuing to push for uh, things that uh, river basins need throughout the world. And uh, we all know about, about our infrastructure uh, issues here in the United States. And, you know, you and uh, that organization have, have done a lot, you know, to address that. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to get all of the uh, locks and dams worked on uh, in the near future because they all need it. Uh, but I do uh, really, uh, I'm very happy for the, the uh, locks and dams south of here that are going to be getting worked on with this new uh, infrastructure package. So thank you for all you've done uh, for that organization. Colin was a one man show when this all started. I mean, it was pretty much Colin and Colin and Colin. And uh, he's got help now. And uh, he, uh, he really is passionate about rivers and, uh, you know, their function in the world. And we couldn't have a better uh, leader. Uh, and I, I wish you all the best, uh, you and the, the MRCTI group uh, going forward. Thanks, Colin. Well, thank you, Mayor. I, I wore this uh, Christmas sweater in, in your honor. Uh, this is definitely <laughs> your theme, uh, crushing it. Uh, you absolutely did it, did it for us and, and our River Valley. So keep on crushing it, Mayor Buell. All and right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
Next, we will have uh, city council members have the opportunity to individually share their remarks. Uh, we will go in voting order for tonight's meeting. So we will start with council member Sprank. Thank you, Adrian. Um, it's been a wild ride these last two years, Roy. So, <laughs> but I had to think back as to like, when did I first hear of you? When did I first know of you? And I had to think back to 2005. This is when you were first running for mayor. I had just moved to town, would have been like 19 or 20, um, and I didn't know anything about city politics or city issues or anything, but I had heard one of your platforms was you wanted to add sexual orientation as a protected class, and I knew then who I was going to be voting for because this was something that personally affects me. Um, so I made sure I got registered to vote. I made sure I knew where to vote, and of course I made sure to cast my vote. Um, <laughs> And then, of course, after you were elected mayor, um, I made sure I attended my first city council meeting in the library. I was totally lost and confused in procedure, as I've learned as people come in and sit the first time. They're like, what are we doing? I didn't know what was going on. Um, I eventually figured it out and was glad I, wit I was there to witness that history that day. Um, and then this started me down the line of continuing to read agendas just to see what's going on to keep up with current issues. And then skip ahead 14 years later, and I decide to run for election. And here I am today, these last two years, been sitting up here working with you. Um, I can, uh, I just want to say thank you for your phenomenal leadership. Um, your steady voice has been a, a, a phenomenal gui guiding light to us younger folks who are definitely green and have made some few mistakes. Uh, so thank you for your great service to the city. And thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. Council Member Resnick. Uh, thank you, Mayor Buell. I remember meeting you, uh, and the more I met you, the more I realized you knew a lot of songs. And you, <laughs> and you always had a song in your heart. And it, would, it did me, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed that, of course, being a professional musician and educator. Um, but I, a, a couple of things that I want to talk about, first of all, uh, before Zoom, I mean, you, you mentioned going to France for this very important occasion, but we, you know, you did a lot of travel, and sometimes the uh, citizens would say, you know, boy, that mayor travels a lot. And I say, well, here's what I've learned traveling with the mayor. Uh, you go into the, the, uh, the airplane, and the mayor is studying. And he's either studying or he's just exhausted because it, you did so much work for the citizens. I always tell the citizens, you want someone to show up, you ask Mayor Buell, and he shows up for the citizens. Whatever it takes, whether he has to go on these, you know, working uh, trips to uh, represent the citizens, uh, or whatever it's needed, he's going he's gonna to be on there with a song in his heart. And uh, the other things I always used to tell my, uh, my students that, who are going to be teachers, that the best way to teach is teach through example. And I think that's what you've done for all of us, especially uh, for the council members. And that is, um, you know, there, there are low points and tough points, but the low, don't stay there. Don't stay there. You go from that low point and you've hit so many high points that have been just talked about a little bit tonight. But, you know, a lot of getting to those high points has been very challenging. Mm. And you've worked through it with that song in your heart. And I, the other thing I, I, I know, talk about high points. What's a high point for uh, Roy Buell? Uh, the high point is uh, to, uh, for him, I think, is to wax rhapsodic about our city's citizens and our accomplishments. I don't think there's a, another thing he likes better than to give credit to other people for the uh, for all the things that our community has accomplished. So, thank you for teaching through example. Thank you for doing everything you do with a song in your heart. Thank you for showing us that we'll get through those low points and we're headed to a better place. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, David. I appreciate that. Thank you, Council Member Farber. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Mayor Buell for his outstanding contributions to the city of Dubuque. Uh, it has been an honor to serve with you, Roy, and most importantly, I extend my gratitude to you for your ongoing guidance over the past nine months as I began my journey serving Dubuque citizens. 
That being said, I have crafted something to read to you. Ode to Mayor Buell. An upperclassman at Dubuque Senior High, captain of the football team, faster than I. Cheering him on, he guided our team. Who would have thought our city leadership was the dream? Fast forward to 2005. Councilman Buell announced his drive. How proud was I to host that first meeting, promoting his candidacy, Dubuque's greeting. In the book of life, no answers in the back. Important to Roy, keep on track. Commitment to serve, new pathways to find, status quo, never inclined. Creating a masterpiece, who would surmise? Dubuque, the Mississippi, unique to visualize. An all-American city, accolades five times, bravo to Roy's passion, unique and refined. Roy's imagination, a preview to our coming attractions. Northwest by Southwest, everyone's satisfaction. A rainbow is never found if one looks down. From Main Street to Millwork, new ambiance in town. From Schmidt Island to Bee Branch, something anew, advancing infrastructure, advancing lifestyle, aspirations come true. Involved, improving our city, never in doubt, with Roy at the helm, on the lookout. From Kerper to Chavanel to Innovation Drive, economic expansion, yes, it does thrive. Actions inspire others, Roy's number one. Engaging others as partners, connecting our community, what a great run. Sustainability champion, green streets and surround, future generations benefit, yes, all around. Dedication to duty, 16 years long. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, governing so strong. Here's to your new adventures, creating as you go, fun-loving memories, families and friends to know. Best of luck and congratulations, your lifelong buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Kavanaugh. Can I can I pass? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to me to have to follow yeah. that work of art right there. Well, Mayor Buell, you uh, you have cemented an extraordinary legacy in this city. And, um, you know, we could stay here all night. I think there, there's not a, a poem in the world that could be read by the end of this day that could name everything that you have left in your wake and all the things that you have done. And um, I have been reminded many times that the next mayor has very large shoes to fill. <laughs> um, but what I keep thinking about and what I keep returning to is just the incredible opportunity you've left us with. I mean, this is an incredible opportunity for a city and it's been created by you and the council members you have served with and the staff that you have served with so honorably. And I am extremely excited for what the future holds and that's thanks to you. And I wanna thank you mainly for being um, an incredible colleague at a time that I don't think any of us anticipated we would be sitting up here and working through what we just worked through in the last two years and continue to work through. And also for being an incredible mentor. Uh, I know personally I would not be sitting here if it wasn't for a conversation with you very early on. And um, I, am, I am forever grateful for that. But I'm, I'm actually mostly thankful for your leadership as a resident of a city that I love. Uh, you know, this, this place that I, that I left and returned to and never stopped calling home was so much um, thanks to you because of all the things that you were able to accomplish with the, the councils that you served with. So thank you for everything that, uh, that you have done and, and thank you for everything you'll continue to do because I know that, um, as Councilman Resnick pointed out, you're, you're not going to rest for real long. I'm sure we're going to be hearing your voice again very soon. So thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Jones. Well, Mayor, like Kavanaugh, he, he got me too. <laughs> In 2005, as I was uh, planning my exit from public service at the fire department, I was trying to figure out what's next. 
and uh, running for council was kind of on my thoughts. Maybe getting on a commission was kind of on my thoughts. Maybe doing that much was on my thoughts. And I had some conversations with my friend Roy, who kind of twisted my arm and said, um, I hear this from David a lot in the music world, go big or go home. Those weren't the words that I got from Roy, but those were the, that was the thought. So I went big. In 2005, the city council had beat back the Human Rights Commission's recommendations in providing protected class status to all of the humans that live in Dubuque. And uh, that offended me. And they'd done it a lot of times. And I thought, that's where the action is, and that's got to be first. We've got to go do that. Well, Roy had already figured that out, that that was first, that, that was next. Um, so that made me want to run. Um, I knew I wanted to do that, but I didn't really know what else. And there's a lot to this. Now, I knew a lot about the city. I'd worked for the organization for 31 years. I knew how the cash flowed. I knew how the policy flowed. Um, but I didn't really have a platform of the things that I wanted to be about. So I stole a lot of Roy's. Um, I found my voice by embracing his leadership. Um, I'm surprised no one else has said it because it was a, it couldn't have been more true, but one of the things Roy said during his candidacy for mayor, and he said it a lot, was that the next five years would define the next 50 for this city. And certainly it has. So wow, look at us now. We have a governance structure that embraces human rights and dignity for every single person, all the time. We didn't really have that before. Um, we've got uh, public engagement in arts and cultural affairs. We've got a new water resource recovery center that's uh, kind of different than most of the others because it puts energy back into the world and puts nutrients back into the soil and keeps pollution out of our waterways. Um, the historic Millbrook District, the Port of Dubuque, the Intermodal Center, the Bee Branch, um, all the solar that's popping up around town. Now, when we were running, we just talked about being green, being a green city. We hadn't really heard of sustainability, um, but we've heard of it now, and this guy is why. He put the label on it. He put the brand on it, and that became the brand for the city of Dubuque. And there, what's the reality? If we're not sustainable, there is no Dubuque. It'll curl up and go away like so many other places have, uh, but we're not doing that. Um, we've actually gotten global recognition and because of Roy's leadership, a real visionary, a true leader, and a true and cherished friend. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Rick. Council Member Roussel. Thank you. Roy, as a resident of Dubuque, I wanna thank you for your many years of dedicated service to our community. And I am so honored that I've been able to serve on the council under your leadership during your final two years as our mayor and Privileged to work with you on many projects through years, like working side by side to plant some trees, which I may call you for after you retire. Uh, no you've been an inspiration and a mentor to me. Your outstanding dedication to our community has left a positive, lasting legacy for every single citizen. Your vision has brought us through tough times. You've positioned us to be the envy of many other communities and to be an innovative leader in so many ways. As one of the newer city council members, I've had just a glimpse into the time it takes to become an effective city leader. And I'm sure that no one will ever know the magnitude of the countless hours that you have given to our community. I appreciate your commitment to Dubuque, giving up so much of your personal time to serve others. You've worked to do what's right, not what's easy. So much has been accomplished under your leadership. You've been a strong voice for those that are less fortunate, and you've always kept the interests of Dubuque front and center. You've been an advocate for our business community to bring jobs and prosperity to our residents. You've dedicated yourself to preserving our environment for us and for our future generations and made sustainability a household word here in Dubuque. May you have a blessed and fulfilling retirement, full of all the things and the people you love. May you have time for all the things that you've had to put on the back burner as you put our community first. Dubuque is a better place for all because you stepped up to serve. I'm proud to call you my colleague and my friend. I shall miss you at the council table, but wish you a most enjoyable future. 
Thank you for your unparalleled service. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bill. Thank you. Next recognition item will be presented by Sustainable Communities Coordinator, Gina Bell. I hope everybody ate a good lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Gina Bell, City Sustainability Coordinator. Uh, well before my time with the city, this tiny pamphlet existed um, with a picture of the mayor urging residents to pledge green. And it encouraged residents to think about the importance of living in a sustainable manner that doesn't jeopardize future generations to meet their needs. So to honor your commitment, Mayor Buell, we updated the pledge cards, which are here. And we went around and asked over the past few weeks um, Dubuque residents to once again pledge. Um, and we had lots of conversations about climate action in, in the process. And um, these pledge cards show us that Dubuque residents continue to pledge green. And they're committed to us meeting our greenhouse gas reduction goal. And um, most importantly, it serves as a reminder that your vision will live on well beyond your time in office. And um, the stack for you are some of the pledges that we received um, to honor your time and your legacy in office. And so thank you. I pledge to continue to honor your legacy um, and continue to make Dubuque as sustainable as possible. And, um, Thank you for all the action that you've inspired, past, present, and future. Wow. <laughs> and for our final recognition item, we have a tribute <laughs> video presented by Media Services. He grew up in the North End of town and he didn't come from wealth and fame and the right family name. But the community embraced him and as a result, I think he decided early on that he needed to give back in his life as well. A career in manufacturing as an employee of John Deere at Dubuque Works, union member in Local 94, which he was very proud of. And then upon retirement decided to give back and ran for council and won and then ran for mayor and one, and now 26 years later has dedicated a good chunk of his life to public service. Mayor Buell's had an amazing life. Roy decided years ago that he wanted to run for city council. It was over a thousand doors that he knocked, introducing himself to people and asking for their support. And he won, and you know, it's not real easy to win against an incumbent. I guess that was the first step in like, you know what, I'm going to do the work to get this done. And he never really stopped with that kind of a philosophy. He had a vision and he, he never really wavered. I enjoyed every day that I worked with him on the council. You always knew exactly where he stood. Uh, we didn't agree 100% of the time, but uh, at the end of the meeting, I always knew that we could get up and shake hands and we'd walk away as friends. When he first ran for mayor, it was very obvious that he was a, a real leader. And I would have to say that I'm just amazed at what the city has accomplished. The meeting where I was introduced to the council as the newly hired assistant city attorney, there were a ton of people there and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I thought, oh, maybe they're all here for me. They, they weren't. <laughs> they were there for one of Mayor Buell's initiatives. So we must listen to one another and work together to build a community where everyone feels valued and has a chance to reach their God-given potential. One of his campaign items that he ran on, which was adding to the Human Rights Ordinance protection for sexual orientation. He had been sworn in in January, and by March had already got that initiative passed. And that I will faithfully and impartially, to the best of my ability, discharge all the duties of the office of mayor, discharge all the duties of the office of mayor, as now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Congratulations. Roy would go to work in the morning at the time he worked over at the University of Dubuque. 
he'd wear his work clothes over there and then he'd bring his suit along and then he'd change and run up to City Hall and have meetings and sometimes he would do that two and three times in a day's time. He was convicted about his position on critical issues facing our time and also to come from a small community and to really believe that we could affect change. You know, he shared all of that commitment and he had the courage to express it. He's an extraordinary leader for our community and, and certainly one of the best. He asked City Council to make sustainability a top priority and ever since 2006 it has been a top priority. Just thinking about how important sustainability is not only for our community but for all communities everywhere. It's made Dubuque a, a really strong leader both nationally and internationally. The renovation or adaptive reuse of this magnificent structure exemplifies our community's commitment to sustainability. A lot of his policies that he's led have been a result of direct resident input. He's approachable. He's always made it very easy to pick up the phone and give him a call. That's what leads to some of the great projects that we've had in our community, like the Bee Branch Watershed Flood Mitigation Project, saving a large part of our community, as a matter of fact, the most economically challenged part of our community from future flooding. And then you look at major projects like the Southwest Arterial, $150 million investment from the Department of Transportation. Then you look at projects that maybe don't seem as big but are just as important, like the Crescent Community Health Center. I believe we are indeed measured by the care that we give to those in need. The mayor's been a part of everything that's happened in Dubuque over the last 26 years. You talk to people today and they're proud to be from the city of Dubuque. They're proud to live here, they're proud to work here, and it wasn't always the case. From 1976 to 1990, this community lost nearly 10% of its population. What's happened with Roy's tenure, along with the council members that he's served with, the city staff, the private sector that's been brought into the conversation, realizing that everything to be successful must be a public-private partnership. Right. Dubuque has rebuilt itself. It, it has molded itself into something that no one could have imagined in the 1980s. A community that's progressive, inclusive, successful, both financially and as it relates to being a community of choice for the people that live here. It's great to see that, that pride in the citizens and seeing them uh, take uh, ownership of what goes on in our community and, and everyone feels like uh, they're really a part of the team and uh, Roy was a, a very important part of bringing that all together. Sustainability, resiliency, equity, and compassion. That's been reaffirmed every year that that's the kind of community we want Dubuque to be. The remaining years that I served on council and he was mayor, I have to tell you those were among the best years of my life. We worked hard, we put in a lot of time, but with Roy, there was always a fair amount of laughter. He was more fun than a barrel of monkeys. <laughs> The only thing that Roy probably didn't achieve during his time as an office was he always swore that he was going to get an ice cream machine back in the council chambers, but I don't think he ever got to it. He's been happy to do what he does. He did it the way that he thought was right, and he did a very good job of it. That will be his legacy. He set as a role model for all of us what it is to work as partners, what it is to have a priority and make it happen. People, partnerships, collaboration, that's what makes things happen, and that's been his motto. Roy encouraged innovation and shared the can-do spirit that so many in this community have, and encouraged us all to believe we could, we could accomplish great things. Working collaboratively to really create a community that we thought would be better, and thought would be more resilient. Because of what's been built in the last 26, we'll see phenomenal growth in Dubuque, and be one of the strongest regional economies in the country, and that's thanks to people like Roy. I did nothing alone, but rather as a part of a team. When I first ran for mayor, I said the next five years will define the next 50 years for Dubuque. I believe that prediction is holding true, and I see a brighter future for us all. Time changes nothing. People with courage and initiative change things. People like Mayor Buell. Well, there being no further business on the agenda, we will stand adjourned. Thank you all.
I don't know where to speak. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's just an amazing presentation. You know, the, but the one thing that, you know, people repeated over and over, and I'm glad that they did, because I truly believe it, is I'm but one person working with a tremendous group of people that makes things happen. And, uh, you know, right down to our, our nationally and internationally uh, recognized city manager, top in his field, been here two years longer than me. <laughs> yeah, he got the jump on me, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, that, and Rick Dickinson, you know, been here as long as I've been here. And look at what uh, Great Dubuque Development uh, has done for this city in partnership with the city of Dubuque and many other organizations. You know, it's, it's all about getting people together, keeping them together, keeping them engaged, and making sure that when a success happens, everybody recognizes that they were a part of it. And uh, you know, that is truly my philosophy, is you can do nothing alone. You've got to have people on your side with the same shared vision, and then you have to have the resources, and we have people like Terry Goodman that know where the resources are. Uh, I've gone with her on many trips uh, across this country. One of the few times I've ever gotten to, to see a secretary uh, that we didn't have to go through security. They waved us around security because Terry's so well known in Washington, <laughs> D.C. I mean, that's, uh, you know, working with people like that and with councils that I've had in the past, uh, it's just been an amazing experience. I can't uh, say enough about this city and, and where we've come and the opportunities uh, that future generations are going to have because, you know, all these council members that I've worked with, all these organizations, these businesses that we've worked with have all been a part of the team. And that, uh, I think, going forward, will continue to be the, keep this community successful as we work as a team. You know, I, I really can't take credit for all those great things that happened. You know, I was certainly a, a big supporter, a big advocate, but uh, it takes a big team to get things done. And we have that in the city of Dubuque. And as long as we continue to value that partnership with, with our fellow citizens and businesses and organizations, we'll continue to be successful. We've got a great council. I was, I was uh, so happy you know, to see the, the election results and, and uh, know that these six people are still going to be here after uh, I'm gone. And uh, you know, we have to work to get a, uh, a good council member elected in the fourth ward to replace uh, incoming uh, Mayor Kavanaugh, but uh, I think we'll, we can do that too. Citizens know that you know, quality people uh, with vision can make all the difference in this world. And uh, I can't thank you all enough. This is just like, <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in all my, my time as a council member that uh, somebody spent so much time talking about another person. <laughs> 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 I, I, really, I really do appreciate it and I appreciate my family for being here, uh, in particular, my lovely wife. And I can truthfully say I would have done none of this without the support and the backing of my wife. I, I really can say that heartfelt, that is the truth. I would not be here. I would probably have never run for city council. I wanted to do something you know, to give back to a community that gave our family so much uh, while I was growing up. And uh, I finished my college degree and, and Deb said, you know, you always wanted to give back to the community. Why don't you run for city council? <laughs> I thought, yeah, great idea. I don't, I don't know how many weeks there were left to the election, but I got the signatures and we had a vacation plan and I think I had seven weeks left before the election. And I just started uh, using my talents as a hurdler hurling bushes, <laughs> knocking on doors. I think the, the media actually caught me doing that. But, uh, you know, I, anytime I, uh, I decide to do something, I do it 110%. That's just who I am. And I'm very happy that I decided to run for city council and, and uh, had the opportunity to work with such great, great people. And I want to say hi to Council Member Connors in the back. She's She's been a steadfast uh, friend and confidant, and uh, we've talked about a lot of great things and made a lot of great things happen. So thanks for being here, Joyce. And with that, 
All, all I can say is thank you again. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay, and now, Adrian, we'll move on to the rest of the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> we will move on to consent items. At this time, anyone participating in the meeting in person who would like to discuss one of the consent items, please approach the podium when the mayor asks if there is any in-person input and state your name and address. For all remote attendees, please enter your name and address in the chat function or state your name and address over the phone when the mayor asks if there is any virtual input. If more than one participant would like to speak, then city staff will determine the speaking order of the participants. Please state the item you would like removed from the consent agenda for separate discussion and consideration. And consent items can be found on pages two through six of the agenda. Thank you, Adrian. Is there anyone in the chambers who would like anything on the consent agenda held for separate discussion? Seeing no one, is there anyone virtually who would like anything held? There are no comments, and we have unmuted our phone-only participants okay, as well. Thank you. And no emails for the consent agenda. Okay, thank you very much. I'll bring it back to the table. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Resnick. I move to receive and file the documents, adopt the resolutions, and deal with the consent items as recommended. Second by Farber. Motion by Mr. Resnick, second by Ms. Farber. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries seven zero. <clears throat> we will move on to items to be set for public hearing. And we have one recommendation to set for public hearing an amended lease with the Dubuque Racing Association for January 3rd, 2022. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. Which we receive and file the documents, adopt the resolution, and set the public hearing for January 3rd, 2022. Second by Sprank. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Sprank. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7 0. Public hearings will be held at, at uh, the times and place indicated. We will move on to boards and commissions, and we have appointments to be made for the Civic Center Advisory Commission, the Historic Preservation Commission, and the Investment Oversight Advisory Commission. Okay, uh, for the Civic Center Advisory Commission, we have one opening and two applicants. Uh, Adrian, I would ask that you call the roll and have each council member select one of the two applicants. Sprank. Uh, Brenda Christ Christener. Resnick. Uh, Brenda Christenden. Farber. Peter Gale. Buell. Brenda Christner. Kavanaugh. Brenda Christner. Jones. Brenda Christner. Roussel. Brenda Christner. Uh, Brenda Christner, 655 Florence Street, is appointed to a three year term through June 29th, 2022, on the Civic Center Advisory Commission. Next is the Historic Preservation Commission. We have one applicant and one opening. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move that Janice Esser be appointed to the balance of the three year term ending July 1st, 2022, on the Historic Preservation Commission. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Kavanaugh. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7 0. Janice Esser is appointed to a three year term through July 1st, 2022, on the Historic Preservation Commission. And the next commission, our last commission uh, for this evening, is the Investment Oversight Advisory Commission. We have one opening and one applicant. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Roussel. I move to appoint Joshua Merritt to the Investment Oversight Advisory Commission. Second by Sprank. Motion by Ms. Roussel, second by Mr. Sprank. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7-0. Joshua Merritt is appointed to a three-year term through July 1st, 2022 on the Investment Oversight Advisory Commission. <clears throat> We will move on to public hearings. At this time, anyone participating in the meeting in person who would like to discuss one of the public hearing items, please plan to approach the podium when the mayor asks if there is any in-person input for the public hearing you would like to speak to. For all remote attendees, 
please enter your name and address in the chat function and state your question or state your name and address over the phone when the mayor asks if there is any virtual input for the public hearing you would like to speak to. If more than one participant would like to speak, then city staff will determine the speaking order of the participants. Public hearing number one is request to rezone 701 Bluff Street. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move to receive and file the communications and further move that the requirement that a proposed ordinance be considered and voted on for passage of two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed be suspended. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Cavanaugh. And do we have a staff report, Wally? Yeah, you bet, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council. Planning Services Manager Wally Wormont speaking. The request before you tonight is to rezone 701 Bluff Street from C4 Downtown Commercial to OR Office Residential to accommodate a residential use on the first floor. It should be noted that back in 2018, the City Council and the Zoning Advisory Commission uh, rezoned the property from OR Ref uh, office residential to C4 downtown commercial. So the reverse of what they're requesting tonight. On December 1st, the Zoning Advisory Commission held a public hearing on the rezoning request. And at that public hearing, the applicant, Ken Lynn, spoke on behalf of the property owner, k &L Leasing. He gave an overview of the previous attentions to the property, which include a restaurant and office use. However, due to supply demands and challenges with bringing the building up to ADA code standards, they no longer plan to open a restaurant or office at this location and would, not, and would now like to use the building solely for residential use. At the meeting, the planning staff presented a staff report noting locations of the property along Bluff Street and that the property um, to be rezoned is actually half of an 1888 Queen Anne Second Empire double house. The other half of the property is currently zoned uh, OR Office Residential. So with approval as rezoning, it would bring the whole property to OR Office Residential. And at that meeting, staff outlined the previously approved request, like I mentioned back in 2018, to rezone the property from OR Office Residential to C4 in order to allow the restaurant on that site. Um, the applicant is now seeking uh, approval to rezone that property back to that OR Office Residential Zoning District to, like I mentioned before, to allow that residential use. The Zoning Advisory Commission discussed the request and approved the rezoning of 701 Bluff Street from C4 Downtown Commercial to OR Office Residential as submitted. And by a vote of five to zero, the Zoning Advisory Commission recommends that the City Council approve the request. A simple majority vote is needed for City Council to approve the rezoning. And Vice Chairperson Becky Kemp is present to answer any questions that you may have with the Zoning Advisory Commission. Otherwise, that is all I have, unless you have any questions for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Wally. Anyone have any questions for Wally? Or no. Okay. Uh, we are in a public hearing to consider a city council approval of a request from Ken Lynn K and L Leasing LLC to rezone property located at 701 Bluff Street from C4 Downtown Commercial to OR Office Residential to accommodate a residential use on the first floor. Is there anyone in the chambers to address the council on this? Do we have any virtual input? We do not. And no emails received. Okay, I'll bring it back to the table for any discussion. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank? Aye. Resnick? Aye. Farber? Aye. Buell? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Jones? Aye. Roussel? Aye. That motion carries 7-0. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Jones? I move final consideration and passage of the ordinance. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Kavanaugh. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank? Aye. Resnick? Aye. Farber? Aye. Buell? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Jones? Aye. Roussel? That motion carries 7-0. Public hearing number two is public hearing for Community Development Block Grant FY 2022 Annual Action Plan Amendment number two. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move to receive and file the documents and adopt the resolution. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Resnick. Uh, Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. Housing and Community Development Director Alexis Stagger recommends City Council approval of the Community Development Block Grant Fiscal Year 2022 Annual Action Plan Amendment Number 2. The Community Development Advisory Commission reviewed the amendment and recommends City Council adoption. The Fiscal Year 2022 Annual Action Plan is being amended to reflect the funding amounts of activities with carryover from previous year's allocations 
and the reallocation of funds to spend funds more expeditiously to meet timeliness requirements per HUD. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. We are in a public hearing to consider city council approval of the community development block grant fiscal year 2022 annual action plan amendment number two. Is there anyone in the council chambers to address us on this? Seeing no one, do we have any virtual input? Not on this item. Okay. No emails received. Okay, I'll bring it back to the table for any discussion. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank? Aye. Resnick? Aye. Farber? Aye. Yule? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Jones? Aye. Roussel? Aye. <clears throat> Motion carries 7 0. Public hearing number three is vacate portion of Tanzanite Drive slash right of way easement, Alt House agreement to vacate easement. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move to receive and file the documents and adopt the two resolutions. Second by Sprank. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Sprank. Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. A request was received from Harry J. and Mary E. Althaus to vacate a 48,391 square foot permanent right-of-way easement that is part of Tanzanite Drive across Lot 2 of Alt Subdivision Plat 2 in Dubuque County. The easement was for a proposed earthen embankment to support the roadway that was planned to be elevated above the Althaus property. Several years after the Tanzanite Drive extension project was completed, the property owners filled the subject property to the road grade. This effectively negated the need for the embankment easement. The remaining right-of-way in Tanzanite Drive area is sufficient to accommodate existing and future utilities. City Engineer Gus Hoyas recommends approval of the request to vacate. Alt House will pay the city $17,500 for the vacating and release of the easement. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> we are in a public hearing to consider city council approval of the request to vacate a 48,391 square foot permanent right of way easement that is part of Tanzanite Drive across lot two of Alt subdivision, plat two in Dubuque County, Iowa. Is there anyone in the chambers to address the council on this? Seeing no one, uh, do we have any virtual input? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Hi, yeah. go ahead. Um, the, 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 this is Brian Kane. Uh, my office is at 2100 Asbury Road. Mary and Harry Althaus, the owners of the property, are here with me. And uh, we won't belabor this, Mr. Mayor. As Mr. Van Milligan said, the need for this easement is no longer necessary and it's moot. Um, so we would, uh, and we agree with uh, city engineers and Mr. Van Milligan's comments that were presented to you. Uh, so we would ask the council approve of the vacation of the easement, please. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other virtual input? There's not. And no emails received. Okay, I'll bring it back to the table then for discussion. Okay, Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank? Aye. Resnick? Aye. Farber? Aye. Buell? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Jones? Aye. Roussel? Aye. That motion carries 7 0. We will move on to public input. At this time, anyone participating in the meeting may address the city council on the action items on the agenda or on matters under the control of the city council. For all in-person attendees, please approach the podium and state your name and address. For all remote attendees, please enter your name and address in the chat function or state your name and address over the phone when the mayor asks if there is any virtual input. If more than one participant would like to speak, then city staff will determine the speaking order of the participants. Individual remarks are limited to five minutes and the overall public input period is limited to 30 minutes. Under the Iowa Open Meetings Law, the city council can take no formal action on comments given during public input or that do not relate to the action items on the agenda. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, is there anyone in the chambers to address the council? I see no one. Do we have any virtual input? Tom LaJudish of 786 Stone Ridge Place would like to address action item number four, and he typed a comment he'd like me to read, if that's okay. Absolutely. Go ahead, please. 
Okay. He, Tom says, I wish to support the proposed ordinance amendment for vacant and abandoned buildings. I'm the co-chair of the NAACP sponsored, sponsored Friends of Fair Housing. Our primary goal is to advocate for access to quality housing for all residents. We urge approval of the proposed ordinance. The plan and timeline required and the revocation of license procedure, including the appeal process, we believe will be beneficial, resulting in providing more quality housing in the city of Dubuque. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other input? That's the only comment okay. we've received. No emails received. Okay, thank you. We'll move on then to the action items. Action item number one is smart parking and mobility management plan development and implementation project request to distribute RFP and create an RFQ review committee. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kavanaugh. I move to receive and file and approve the request. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Kavanaugh, second by uh, Mr. Jones. Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. Director of Transportation Services Ryan Nucky and Project Manager Steve Sampson Brown request City Council approval to distribute a request for proposals for engineering services related to managing the smart parking and mobility management plan development and implementation project. The RFP will require the selected consultant to manage a smart parking and mo mobility management plan development and implementation project in conjunction with developing a post-pandemic parking system business strategy to support the system's finances and provide a positive customer experience. The study phase of the project will begin immediately and then the consultant will assist the city with selecting and designing the implementation of private vendor technology and the new operational strategic plan as funding is available. Specifically, the RFP will require the selected consultant to provide services for stakeholder engagement, parking and mobility, supply, demand analysis, new technology evaluation, parking system financial modeling, and delivering the final smart parking and mobility management plan. Guiding principles developed for this project include, parking is a key ingredient for keeping the downtown economically viable. Parking needs to be a partnership between the public and private sectors. Equitable and inclusive mobility solutions are one of the core components of a community's livability because it provides access to living wage jobs, healthcare services, quality education, cultural institutions, and recreation opportunities. Parking access and any updated policies need to meet the needs of a diverse group of users. Parking must be fully integrated with transit and other forms of transportation system mobility in order to maximize efficiencies and customer experience. Parking and transportation mobility is not free and an equitable revenue fee structure needs to be established. Parking and mobility solutions need to utilize the most up-to-date technology and must be simple to use and manage across all platforms. To the maximum extent feasible, parking and subsequent modes of travel to final points of destination must feel safe for customers. A business strategy that works in a post-pandemic environment needs to be developed. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Do we have any discussion? Mr. Kavanaugh? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I'm really I'm excited to see this moving forward. I think. Um, you know, especially with the timeline and looking at this all next year, I think that's um, obviously this is needed. Obviously, we've been talking about it a lot, you know, since the pandemic happened and before. So I think it's a really good thing that we're moving this forward. I do have a question, though, um, and this, is, this just relates to the pilot project. On page one of the memo, that uh, the staff memo that Mr. Nucky um, attached to this, at the bottom, there's, it says that information gathered during the process has identified the strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and things. Can you remind us and the public where that information might be accessed? You know, the information from the pilot project and um, what we've what we've found so far. Um, so you're, uh, Ryan, do you want to go ahead and address the question, please? Thank you. Can you reference, reference this to him right now? Yes, um, Steve Sampson Brown from the engineering department is on the phone and could also answer. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. This is Steve Sampson Brown, project manager with the engineering department. 
So we, uh, in early December, we received the EPA's uh, technical assistance final report. So uh, based on timing, uh, Economic Development Director Jill Connors uh, headed out on vacation uh, right after we received it. So our intent is to just review that to city staff, and then we will get it on a, a soon upcoming agenda for uh, people to see. Uh, generally, the report was, and again, it was free technical assistance, so it was not an in-depth study, but it identified uh, some items. Certainly, people living in the uh, North End Point area, Washington area neighborhood, having difficulties getting to job opportunities, which is not new information to city staff, but we had some good dialogue, some good uh, conversations with both um, residents and also nonprofits as part of that process. So we learned a few things, got a few more details on uh, how we could possibly look at connection points between someone who needs to get up, perhaps go to daycare or school, drop off a child and then head to work and, and meet a tight schedule to do that. So uh, and then, of course, there's also uh, health care in between and, and different visits. So uh, we got a lot of good information and um, but it was at a cursory level. Again, it was uh, at no cost to the city through their uh, consultants. So uh, we plan on basically taking that information and building upon it and, and collecting more details uh, as part of that. No, not, no further input from me. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that answers my question. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Looking forward to seeing the information. Okay. Any other comments, yeah. Ms. Ms. Farber? So when I was reviewing the documents, I was very impressed with how the management teams were set up and the inclusion of the downtown businesses uh, to give the feedback. And so I was just wondering if there is any more insight into how you're going to be looking at the hybrid workforce uh, that was potentially discussed among some of the major downtown businesses and um, how much more of a pathway forward in terms of their um, opportunities for them to actually sit down and continue the dialogue before uh, the RFP or final decisions are made. Um, I'm sorry, I'm Ryan Nucky. I'm the Director of Transportation Services. Uh, first time here, so very excited about being here and congratulations, Mayor Buell. Um, we were approached by Rick Dickinson to, and, and Mike Van Milligan to include some of the larger businesses downtown. Currently, we're working with them on parking ramps and parking structures um, with the hybrid of some employees only coming to work two days out of five days in a week. So what we're gonna do moving forward is, is we're creating different core teams that would include the public, the city, to put input together with our consultant team. We're gonna take that into consideration, work with our consulting team on technology that's out there and then upon looking at cost, work, go back to the community and say, this is what we think we can afford and put together um, so everyone has a win in the end. Right, because I think it was very interesting that they all came up with um, pooling or reusing the space management so that you didn't necessarily have a dedicated space per person, but maybe a pool of spaces for the corporation so that they can optimize the time that those spaces are being used. I thought that was very um, thinking forward, if you will, based upon our new normal. So thank you again for um, continuing that dialogue with them. I think that's important. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Ma Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes, thank you. So uh, thanks for coming. Um, question is, um, first of all, of course, council is about policies and procedures. And I saw the bullet point, f uh, bullet point number four is talking about updated policies. Um, which is very important. Does the RFP address the need for reviewing the existing infrastructure and policies to ensure we are doing uh, what we are using, what we have to its fullest capacity uh, before we apply new technologies? And right now, sometimes uh, things, uh, well, does it address planning for the life expectancy of the older ramps and those costs? I mean, uh, it's been my experience that sometimes um, some of our equipment uh, breaks down, then we can't we can't okay. replace it. It's so we need equipment that's both good now and good later, and that's all for difficult to do. I, I see that every day right now. We have seven different ramps, and I have five different technologies in each of the ramps. Um, currently, some of our ramps right now we can't even get parts to fix them due to the 
technology being outdated or the company is going bankrupt. Um, one thing in this is we want to do a full blown study on what we have currently just to meet those needs because we also have businesses that are looking at doing a hybrid. So our ramps now, how do they work in current structure? How are they going to work in the hybrid structure? But along with that, how do we build a technology in there that is going to not only work for the next two to five years, but 10 to 15 years? Um, I know we have another ramp on the docket to be built, but we want to do a study before we look at that to see with this hybrid system, how can this technology make it so that we can A, do a better job now with what we have, but B, keep moving forward to make sure that we're not falling behind with technology. So you mentioned before we build. My question is, does this have an effect, this uh, study right here, does this have an effect on our agreement to build the ramp down by the uh, courthouse? So I'm, I'm gonna respond to that, if you don't mind. Um, it, that will be determined by the parties that we have the agreement with, because the city does have an agreement uh, with Cottingham and Butler and Heartland Financial uh, to uh, construct a parking ramp that would open by December of 2023. And um, we have been uh, partnering with uh, Cottingham and Butler and Heartland on this analysis. And so I do think this analysis will influence their opinion on uh, when that agreement either needs to be performed on, does it state at the end of 2023, or does it change to some other type of performance? But in, in fact, in the end, it's their decision because we do have a signed agreement with them. But they're obviously open-minded to it, and that's why they're participating in this study. Thank you, and that leads to my question about timeline. What's the expected timeline of uh, RFP? They do the study, they present the study. Can we do all that and uh, before the time uh, that you mentioned? Well, we think we can, but I don't know if you or Steve wants to talk about timeline. Steve, would you like to reference the timeline, please? Uh, sure, I can do that. So. Uh, again, we plan for a robust stakeholder engagement phase, uh, so that's not something we can do in two weeks. Uh, so generally, we've laid out uh, milestones of early April for the completion of the management plan, and we've uh, then set uh, July of this upcoming calendar year for selection of vendor technology that uh, we'd like to begin deploying as a result of recommendations and adoption of the management plan. And then we'll look for the end of this calendar year to actually deploy that uh, technology. So it, you would contrast that schedule with the information the city manager just uh, provided regarding the, the companies downtown uh, making decisions re regarding the new ramp. Thank you. And uh, the source of the funds, 250000 to 325000 that's an estimate of the study. Are we, uh, what is the source of the funds? Are we going to be able to use any of the grant funds that uh, we received from the federal government? I believe the source is the Downtown Urban Renewal District. Is that correct? Yeah. Steve can answer that question. Yeah, Steve? yeah that's correct, um, Mike. And it is just uh, just a quick question about the uh, how did you get the 250 to 325,000? Is that just what uh, cities our size parking studies generally run, or did you kind of call? Uh, and find uh, out? I would, um, I would say it's a little bit of both. Uh, generally, for any in depth study, you you know, it's paid on a time and expense uh, basis by the consultant. So if they work an hour, they charge you for an hour, if they don't work an hour, they don't charge you. Uh, when we did the uh, east west corridor study. Uh, I don't have that number in front of me, but that was uh, over $400,000. So, um, and I think a lot of this, we will need to, as a group of city staff, get down to a final consultant. We're expecting some real high quality consultants with some in-depth experience across the country uh, responding to this. So I think the best result would be to work with them uh, use their knowledge and experience to, to help us understand how much efforts needed and then we can have a, a group discussion on, on locking in a final budget. So that's how I generally put in a uh, cost range for the uh, estimated cost of the study. Thank you. And as I agree with uh, Mr. Uh, Van Milligan's memo about parking being a key ingredient to a vibrant downtown. So I'm going to 
support this. Um, I just hope that our study leads to action and not the study leads to another study and a five flag situation. So this is very important and I think the timeline is critical. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Frank. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I'm, I'm all in support of this. I guess the biggest thing is we're talking to these businesses. I just want them to be aware of the importance of being accurate with their numbers of how many spaces that they need. Um, and I know we can't predict, our, everybody's crystal ball is a little fuzzy right now. We can't predict that far out, but somehow getting a, having them understand a firm, if you say you need this many spots, okay, we'll, we'll make it work. I just want to make sure that that's stressed enough that these player, these key stakeholders understand that. Because there is more expansion coming in, in the Millwork District, for example. Um, the Conlins are working on a building that will possibly need 70 to 75 parking spots all of a sudden. Where are those folks going to park? I don't know. But that's something that I really want to stress that. And I don't know how we can stress that with the stakeholders that tell us the accurate number that you need. I, th I think they're well aware of that. And you'll notice one of the parts of the study is how do you uh, keep your parking system financially viable? Mm -hmm. And so it's certainly not in the interest of any of the downtown businesses that we spend more money than we need to because they're the ones that are going to pay for it in the end because that's the way to keep it financially viable is charge a fee to use it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the motion is to receive and file and approve. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Barber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7 0. Action item number two is East West Corridor Capacity Improvements, approved professional consultant services contract, preliminary engineering design, and environmental clearance phase. Mr. Mayor, I move that we receive and file and adopt the resolution. Second. Okay. Okay, motion by Ms. Farber, second by Mr. Jones. Uh, Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. Assistant City Engineer Bob Schissel recommends City Council approval of the Professional Consultant Services Contract with HDR Incorporated to complete the preliminary engineering design and environmental clearance phase to advance the development of the east-west corridor capacity improvements along University Avenue at the intersections at Loris Boulevard, Asbury Road, and Pennsylvania Avenue. The estimated professional services fee to complete the preliminary engineering design and environmental clearance phase is $1,042,055. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. We have any discussion? Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7-0. Action item number three is fiber to the home business aesthetic guidelines. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kavanaugh. <laughs> Um, I move to receive and file and further move that the requirement that a proposed ordinance be considered and voted on for passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed be suspended. Second. Motion by Mr. Kavanaugh, second by Mr. Jones. Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. City Engineer Gus Sahoyas recommends City Council approval of fiber to the home and business aesthetic guidelines. With multiple companies wanting to develop and provide fiber to the home and to businesses, City staff wanted to provide guidance to these companies for location, type, size, and color of vaults, handholds, and other equipment that is placed in the public right-of-way. These standards provide for uniform placement of equipment to accommodate future maintenance by the providers. <clears throat> it is intended that a new Chapter 8 Fiber to the Home and Business Aesthetic Guidelines be included in Title 11 Rights of Way in the City Code. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. Do we have any discussion? Just Mr. Kavanaugh? Real, real quick, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I just, I just want to comment on how impressive this is that the, the city staff is on top of stuff like this. I mean, these are the kinds of things that you don't recognize are important as, you, as we talk about the most exciting thing, which is fiber to the home for everybody. 
But these things really matter when we talk about all the other stuff we've been talking about tonight. And I just, I just am incredibly impressed and constantly impressed by, um, you know, our engineering staff and other folks that are paying attention to these kinds of things that um, a lot of us aren't really noticing are needed. So thank you very much for that. You bet. Anyone else? Okay, Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kavanaugh. I move final consideration to passage of the ordinance. Second. Motion by Mr. Kavanaugh, second by Mr. Jones. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7-0. Action item number four is proposed ordinance amendment for vacant abandoned buildings. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move to receive and file the communications and further move that the requirement that a proposed ordinance be considered and voted on for passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed be suspended. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Resnick. Mike, please. Thank you. Housing and Community Development Department Director Alexis Steger recommends the City Council adopt proposed ordinance amendments for vacant abandoned buildings to make processes and procedures more efficient and user friendly. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request Mayor and City Council approval. Thank you, Mike. Do we have any discussion? Adrian, Mr. Sell? Yeah, I, I would just like to state that um, this is just another example of the good work by Alexis and her department. Um, I think these are really good changes that are going to ha have win-win results for both the city and for um, residents and for the business owners. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move final consideration and passage of the ordinance. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Resnick. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Action item number five is adoption of the 2020 National Electric Code. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kavanaugh. I move to receive and file and further move that the requirement that a proposed ordinance be considered and voted on for passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed be suspended. Second by Sprank. Motion by Mr. Kavanaugh, second by Mr. Sprank. Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. Housing and Community Development Director Alexis Steger recommends City Council approval of an ordinance adopting the 2020 National Electric Code with local amendments. The City of Dubuque currently uses the 2017 National Electric Code. Using current building codes is considered industry, industry best practice. The Building Code Advisory and Appeal Board has reviewed and supports these recommended changes. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request Mayor and City Council approval. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Have any discussion? Um, this is Mr. Mayor. Mr. Sprank? Yeah. Um, I'm all for this. This is a good thing. We need to keep updating all of our codes. I guess talking to some electricians about this, the kind of the question was, was so they understand this, we need to have all these codes updated. Uh, they just wanna make sure who's actually checking electrical contractor license that they're up to date with, that they're actually up to date. Is, there, is that a way that that can be happened with city staff? So. Um, Alexis, oh, um, sorry, Michael Belmont, the oh. assistant housing and community development director is here and he'll <laughs> answer your question. Okay. Hi, uh, Mike Belmont. Uh, so uh, state electrical licenses are handled uh, by the state. Mm -hmm. We don't uh, handle them here locally. Okay. Um, we have gotten that uh, communication as well, and uh, we are going to begin to look at that process to see, and we have to look at staffing and, and, and what it would take to actually check licenses on site. Okay, thank you. Right. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Rezek? Yes, thank you. Um, I guess my question is a general question because Codes come before us very often, and sometimes it's the national code, sometimes it's the international code, sometimes it's the unified code. Uh, so what, what are the criteria? What, uh, well, how do we choose uh, between, if there are uh, competing codes, uh, how do we choose between those codes? Uh, Mike Belmont again. 
that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, I think that uh, the, the codes that we have adopted are uh, the most uh, adopted in the country. Um, there are very few other code uh, out there. Um, there is an option that we could write our own codes by ordinance, but uh, the amount of time and effort that that would take would be significant. Um, the codes that are adopted are vetted very thoroughly at, at national conventions. Um, it takes three years for a code cycle to go through, and the reason for that is that the amount of uh, council hearings that they have on every code uh, is it's very, it's very labor intensive. Uh, it'd be difficult for us to do that ourselves. So, um, thanks. I didn't expect us to write our own code, but uh, I just know that there are all these codes. So they're the most common, most stringent, most uh, they're safety minded and uh, most recognized. They're the most recognized and and uh, pretty much nationally, these these international codes are adopted uh, or some version of them. Local, you know, there are some local amendments to them. But so so wherever you go, these codes are going to be recognized and. Uh, Practitioners, electricians, plumbers, etc. They're familiar with those codes, so they know how to build to that standard. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. Be before you get too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I'll stay here. The fitness <laughs> program. <laughs> Titling, isn't it? They, don't they all come from the International Conference of Building Officials? Uh, they don't. Actually, the, the NEC is, the, uh, is done by the uh, NFPA. Okay. So that's a National Fire Protection Association. That, that's who creates the, N, the NEC. Uh, most of the other codes are the International Code Council. So it is a different organization, but uh, those are the two primary <coughs> sources. Yep. Thank you. Okay, any other questions before you leave the podium? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, the motion is uh, to receive and file and waive the three readings. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7 0. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kavanaugh. I move final consideration and passage of the ordinance. Second, second by Sprank. Motion by Mr. Kavanaugh, second by Mr. Sprank. Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank. Aye. Resnick. Aye. Farber. Aye. Buell. Aye. Kavanaugh. Aye. Jones. Aye. Roussel. Aye. That motion carries 7 0. Action item number six is request for consideration of project and facilities manager. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Sprank. I request uh, that we receive and file and approve this motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Sprank, second by Mr. Jones. Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. Leisure Services Manager Marie Ware requests City Council consideration of the addition of a project and facilities manager for the Leisure Services Department that would directly report to the Leisure Services Manager. It would be anticipated that the earliest hiring would result in only four months in fiscal year 2022, the current fiscal year. The position would be budgeted in fiscal year 23 and beyond if approved. If the position started on March 1st, 2022 and ran through June 30th, 2022, the budget would be $35,730 for recurring costs the initial purchase of a tablet, computer, and software and smartphone will be $5,676. The initial non-recurring recurring cost of ads and hiring expense, photo, office furniture, radio, Mitel phone setup is $10,648. This totals $52,056 for four months in all initial and initial non-recurring purchases. Due to openings and positions and the positions being frozen in fiscal year 21, Savings have been identified for the fiscal year 2022 cost. For fiscal year 23 through fiscal year 27 and beyond, a project management fee could be added to the CIP budget currently being planned to be presented to the City Council in March of 2022. The project and facilities manager would charge their time to projects within the capital improvement program, as is done in the engineering department. This would be $125,662 of recurring cost in fiscal year 23 and beyond. The Leisure Services Department currently has over $10 million in over 110 capital projects, of which 33 are dir directly led by Leisure Services Manager Marie Ware. Recently, Leisure Services sat down and mapped out the capital projects, which is attached to this memo and outlines the project lead. There are 21 projects that are funded by the American Rescue Plan Act that must be completed in a certain time frame. 
There are 10 projects that are bond funded and must be completed in a certain time frame. There are three projects that are community development block grant that must be completed in a certain time frame. Throughout the chart, you will see council goal project, major projects, and management in progress all related to city council goals and priorities. There are four projects that are related to grants that have specific timelines. This is not the complete list, however, shows the priorities that must be completed. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. We have any discussion? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Resnick? I just wanted to say that Mr. Van Milligan's memo really uh, answers very well what uh, I've been hearing is that, you know, why not go through a regular order, the city budget process for adding this position, but the, uh, the time crunch that we have and the opportunity is now, and um, I, I applaud the effort to get ahead of this, and so I fully intend to support it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank? Aye. Resnick? Aye. Barber? Aye. Fuel? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Jones? Aye. Roussel? Aye. That motion carries 7-0. Action item number seven is budget amendment to additional positions in human resources department. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. I move to receive and file and approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Kavanaugh. Uh, Mike, please. Thank you. City Manager Mike Van Milligan. Human Resources Director Shelley Stickford has completed review of the staffing needs of the human resources department. She is recommending two additional positions to complete the volume of work and to provide the level of customer service that is needed. In the current fiscal year, fiscal year 22, the two positions will be funded from remaining balance from closing out of the fiscal year 2021 budget. For fiscal year 2023 and beyond, the positions will be incorporated into the general fund operating budget, including administrating administrative overhead payments from the enterprise funds. With the performance of the local option sales tax and the Dubuque Racing Association amended lease, there will be adequate funds for these new positions. I concur with the recommendation and respectfully request mayor and city council approval. Thank you, Mike. Have any discussion? Adrian, would you call the roll, please? Sprank? Aye. Resnick? Aye. Farber? Aye. Buell? Aye. Kavanaugh? Aye. Jones? Aye. Roussel? Aye. That motion carries 7-0. Next are council member reports. Hey, anyone have any council member reports? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mr. Uh, Farber, sorry, <laughs> I almost called you Mr. Sell. Sorry, <laughs> Ms. Farber, please. Um, I have actually two reports to share. Uh, one is um, that on December 10th, I was honored uh, to be a trustee speaker at the University of Dubuque's Physician Assistant Program graduation. And that ceremony included 25 very talented students from throughout the United States, including the Dubuque region. Um, most of these students actually came from rural and local areas, and thus their desire um, was really to serve um, as a PA to um, smaller communities. And so I believe that Dubuque is very fortunate to have this program on campus, and that even more importantly, we are very fortunate to retain some of these healthcare professionals uh, to work with our city medical providers and in our hospitals. And then yesterday, I was very, very um, happy to act as Santa's elf as I assisted the volunteers at the Dubuque Area Labor Harvest, um, where we prepared and handed out over 350 holiday meals. And then we helped make this Christmas season very bright for these families with hundreds of toys, books, and hand crocheted caps and blankets that were gifted to the families. So the Dubuque Area Labor Harvest generosity I think was very greatly appreciated by all these families. Um, and once again, I want to thank these volunteers for doing this and how grateful I was to be invited to participate in this very special day. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, uh, thank you uh, to family and friends who have stayed with us throughout the meeting. Uh, this will be my last hurrah, and uh, I just want to tell you all thank you again <clears throat> for all that you've done uh, for me, for this community, and uh, thank my council colleagues. Uh, it's a great group going forward, and I, I feel very good about the city, and Mike, and his, uh, Corey, and Adrian, and Krenna, 
I, uh, I'm going to miss all of you guys and, and your staff as well. Uh, this has been a great run. Dubuque's in a great place and uh, despite COVID. And I think uh, we're going to continue to move in the right direction. And uh, once again, thank you to my lovely wife for letting me do this. <laughs> Oh, and now the time is here. It's time to face the final curtain. We are adjourned. <laughs>